Every so often, something rather reasonably priced comes along that isn't awful. This is one of them. This is the Stoga XM1. I remember when I got the call to say that these things were going to exist. The spec, the features, and the price on them, I went, yeah, that might be nice, but my hopes were pretty low. Well, actually, it's really smart. This is the Stoga XM1. There is, however, one big thing that I dislike about it is that it uses an acronyms and silly words for things. So, pro-adaptive. Lots of pro-adaptive things on this rifle. Pro-adaptive checkering, for example, and the multi-grip system, the MGS. However, as much as these things may have silly names, they are really good. So we're gonna have a look through this rifle back to front and um, talk about it. So starting at the back, we have pro-adaptive lengthening spacers. Pro-adaptive, because uh, they're adaptive and they're pro. Uh, they're very pretty colors. You can take them out and put the pad back out just right down to the base, that'd be fine. It is actually quite satisfactory. So the thing you notice when you first pick up this rifle, it's very light, very streamlined, except where you want it to be. So you've actually got a bit of size and shape and form as opposed to a lot of these sort of cheaper lightweight guns that just end up feeling horrible. It's very ergonomic. I think they use the word muscular um, when they describe it as well. It's a cool, stylish, ergonomic gun anyway coming on from this that's quite nice so actually with those two in there it is a little bit better than it would be otherwise still a bit short for me but i'm a giant so yeah that's cool take those spaces out and it is going to be a lot more child friendly which is obviously what a lot of people are buying this gun for here we start to see the pro adaptive checkering system pro adaptive checkering essentially means that in different parts of the gun there are different checkerings for different reasons and styles. So in places that you need a certain type of grip, you'll have a certain type of grip. Bit more grip, bit less grippy, bit more grippy. Bit less grippy, no grip. Bit more grip. And a little bit of grip on there, pro, or oh, pro adaptive checkering on the bolt handle. Anyway, um, this is where it starts to get quite exciting in the multi-grip system is that you can take this off. And when you buy this gun, it comes with two cheek pieces. So you pull that out. Oh something to whine about in a minute. There we go, take that off. And boom, it comes off. One thing I would have liked to see, and actually probably wouldn't have taken too much effort, would have been, seeing as you've got this sliding cheek piece, they could have just made this cheek piece adjustable. However, I expect that would have taken more precision than just being able to clip this one on. This is a Monte Carlo type cheek piece. He says, very easy to clip on. <laughs> he says. Hold on, it's because it's got this little wedge in there. <laughs> There we go, very easy to clip on um, when you're not a Muppet. There you go. So that goes on there like that. And these just little two mil Allen key screws it into place. So it is actually probably significantly cheaper and easier to produce than any alternative. And suddenly, actually, they're gone mounts and shoulders nicely with the scope that it comes with. So this is the kit. They do do an open sight XM1 as well, uh, but most places in the UK will be selling this as a kit. Uh, the grip is also pro-adaptive, so you can take off this blue grip, quite simply, again, it says. And pop on the black one. So if you want to just make this rifle a little bit more subtle, uh, a little bit more huntery, you can do that. More importantly, if you want, you can spray that different colors, change it to different colors, wrap it in leather, do whatever your heart desires, um, which is nice. It's a, to be honest, one of my favorite things about this rifle, I've got a lot of favorite things about this rifle actually, is the fact that you can put this cheek piece on and not be stuck with a cone that is too low, which is the bane of most cheaper air guns, both pre-charged and spring and everything. And you actually can start to develop a proper shooting technique, starting with a decent cheek weld. So, Trigger, also adaptable. I must admit the trigger is really unshapely and pretty horrible, but what it does do at least is force your trigger finger into a decent position as opposed to having any edge on it or anything. And it's not sharp, it's not nasty, it just is a bit unstylish for a relatively stylish looking gun. But it is that ability to move back and forward that's quite nice. So you can actually get it to fit your hand relatively well. Safety catch sits right in front there. Nice, big, obvious, simple. Perhaps a little bit noisy. I'm trying to think if you could do it quieter. 
and you can, it's just not that easy. It is a bolt action. That comes up, comes back, engages with your hammer spring, and pulls all the way back. It is not that nice, slick, or simple as many others are. But I'll tell you what it is, it works. Um, and it's only not nice by comparison to some of its big competitors with, for lots more money. And it's at this point it's worth saying that this is not a Daystate or a Virarch or an FX. But it's about 300 quid. So you could buy three of these instead of one of the others. Or maybe even four of these instead of one of the others. And that's quite a big deal. So, as much as that bolt is not as slick and delicious as it likes, and if you can definitely feel feel every stage of it, it's um oh it doesn't really matter, does it? It's just picking picking holes. What is nice is that pro adaptive ergonomic bolt head actually does fit so nicely into the crook of your finger and your thumb. You can tell that somebody thought about that when they made it, which unlike a lot of other big round bolt knobs that just try and emulate something that you would have on a rifle, uh, yeah, this is quite smart. So it comes with a single tr shot tray fitted. And that single shot tray pulls out thus, nice, simple, and goes over there. And then what you get with it is two magazines. And we flick over quick before talking about the magazines and you actually come with a mag holder on the fore in there. And you can take that off because it's unsightly, but what it does do, at least, sorry, it give you a handy place to keep your magazines so you don't lose them, which is cool. How to load the magazines, come have a look. So to load this magazine, you push against the spring until it comes all the way around and stops. And when it stops, you put a pellet in backwards and release. And then suddenly the pressure of that spring will keep that pellet in there. Work your way back round, loading up. Fairly simple, really. Like I said, it comes with two, but you, you could buy as many as you like. They're not particularly expensive. It's also worth mentioning at this point that this black grip here is actually slightly more bulbous than the blue grip, so it is a little bit nicer for larger hands. Also worth mentioning that actually, if you look at the features here, this is what it would look like with a what looks like a shrouded barrel and open sights, and they do a fully suppressed version that includes the suppressor on it. However, we don't get them in the UK. We get one that has a thread and a suppressor presumably because our laws on silencers, whatever you want to call them, moderators are what they are. Right, so you've just put your last two pellets in and she is good to go. Click that back in, there's a little ball bearing here that will clock to a little hole on the back of the plastic. And you are there, good to go with your seven shots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's seven shots in 2.2 two, and nine in 1.7.7. I just have to count because, well, it's not that simple. Shot count wise, you're getting about 50 out of the 2.2 two and about 40 something out of the 1.7.7. It was literally about 41, 42. I've put a few fills through this gun now just for, well, just have a play, see what it's like. And I, depending on where you want to be accuracy wise and power wise, this rifle is unregulated. And it took me a little bit of confusion because certain sites out there do say it is regulated. Uh, it is unregulated and shooting it will dictate that. It has much more of a traditional power curve, meaning that you will see a slight variation in height between the pressures of 200 bar and 100 bar. But, you know, actually pretty accurate all in all for what, it, for what it's worth. So this is where the Italian muscular styling comes in. You have this little fold here, you have the bulbous forend, the different checkering patterns on there. It's a little bit deeper through there, so it's a little bit nicer if you're gonna take a, a close hold on it. It's actually well designed. You have your rails on the forend, your mag holder, and these are the only bit of the rifle that feels plasticky. And actually, although the stock is obviously a plastic synthetic, it does feel pretty good. It doesn't feel nasty. And a lot of that is to do with the pro adaptive checkering. Um, barrel wise, it's running a very unexciting barrel with an adapter, a thread adapter there that's actually Allen keyed on. The silencer moderator that it comes with, I'm not sure if it's just this one, it just has a little bit of shake about it, which is strange because it is actually under some compression. And when you open the moderator up, it is a very classic hair curler with some foam wrapped around it and a couple of washers in. It's a fairly simple system. But I'll tell you what, it does work. And it's a fairly quiet rifle to shoot. A little bit of noise from the action, but I'm not sure that might bed in after a while. And again, if you're really worried about that, 
you could tune it or you could just buy a slightly better gun that doesn't have that as part of the issue. Flipping down onto the cylinder, you have a quick fill and it comes with obviously a quick fill with a QCO2 thing on the back. Look in this packet here, so it will clip straight onto a quick adapter and a gauge on the front. The gauge is not that exciting. It's golden in color, which is about the only non-silver and black apart from the blue bits on the rifle. I think it's done in bar times 10. Nice, simple color coding. It's about the only thing on this rifle that is a giveaway to the lower end quality. Everything else is really nicely finished, but that gauge is just a little bit cheap. I know that's me just picking holes, but guess what? Um, that is also allowed. As I said, I just want to reiterate, in the hand, this rifle feels really nice and it weighs so little. You know, it's ma main competition in terms of what you would buy instead of one of these it would be a Gamo Fox. Uh, and the only thing the Gamo Fox has over this is its own filling gear that comes with it and a couple more shots per fill. But in terms of feel, there you go, I'm going to get done over by the Gamo Mafia. Yeah, this is... Um, actually a really nice rifle and I tell you what the trigger is actually really nice too which is shocking because most cheaper guns the triggers are less than nice comes with built-in stud holders actually into the stocks so you're not having to just drill into it or anything you just clip your slings and swivel straight onto these I'm not sure how that would take a bipod and that's my only issue there but I'm sure like with all these things you just do it up tight enough and it'll be absolutely fine Another favourite thing about this rifle is this, not the quick fill, but the bag of seals. There are so many cheap imported rifles out there that after a couple of years and it comes to service a clock, you can't get the seals for them, which is the thing that the Gamo is really, really good for, is that you can and probably will do forever. But yeah, the fact that it comes with that, so it's a real low hassle, low energy, low effort thing when someone comes in to have it serviced or for you servicing it at home, it's got all those bits. Yeah, that's really nice. And to the fact that they give it to you now means that you'll probably be able to get it in the future as well. I like that a lot. Um, I do like that a lot. I like the dust cover too. It's a nice touch. So, without further ado, let's go shoot it. All right. So we've got a target, 25 yards. I'm gonna see what we can do. I know it's not gonna be the, mo the most massive and exciting test, but Look at the reality, if you, you know, behind this gun, most air gun shots are within 30 yards. All right, maybe that's a generalization. Most of my air gun shots are within 30 yards. Because I kind of feel like that's what an air gun is all about. So I'm not sure if I said before, but my number one hate on these Stokers is the fact that these turrets are exposed. So every time you put it in a bag, it's liable to do this. And I zeroed it already, so let's see how far out we are. quite a way. So in the field, when you're just sort of going for it with the bolt, by the way, you don't really notice it. So for people who are you know, just going and shooting one of these, you won't notice what I mean about the bolt. You just need to grab it and reload it and stop being so finickety and prissy. So the targets got down there are a roe deer and a red deer. I just gut shot the roe deer while zeroing. And again, it is mildly frustrating But it is accurate. Oh, it doesn't like these pellets at all. Quite like those other ones. So I loaded different ones into these two different mags. The first ones are Aeron's Diablo Fields and they seem to have put a nice group in. A couple of nice groups in. And these are H&Ns and they absolutely hate them. All right, so we're fairly on the money now. Let's just take a couple of headshots. That's nice, so what you do have there is a bolt stop. So when you're out, your bolt will jam, which is a really nice feature. Now, once we've just done shot with those mags, which is really quick and easy, I'm gonna tell you my last thing that I dislike about this gun, and that is this, the single shot tray. I have theories on single shot trays that they should always be, you know, bigger than they are, and this is the problem with putting single shot trays into a lot of guns is that actually when you put them in I have relatively large fingers they are just a little bit too fiddly for me 
Well, that's why it comes with two mags. So that's lucky, really, isn't it? All right. Well, hey, <laughs> here we go. We have the shots. So, first group of four. One, two, three, four. The top one's taking the top of the box off there. Not so bad. Second group, three shots. Not bad at all. And this is when I say that when I changed pellets, I got one, two, three, and then another three on top. Not entirely sure what happened there. Um, I guess the answer is only time will tell. Again, assumed that it was pellet, but perhaps just a couple of dodgy ones first in the magazine. Never seem to take a couple of headshots, to be honest. I did click it up a little bit and didn't calculate, so took one high, and recalculate another one. Luckily, on real deer, that doesn't happen that often. And then, just a quick single shot into the bottom there. Would you be happy head shooting rabbits at 25, 30 yards? All day long. All day long. You know, I think people might buy this gun with an expectation that it'll do a little bit too much. But at the bottom line, it's as good accuracy wise as any other gun in its price point, if not actually a little bit better. Let alone that it actually feels quite nice in the hand and operates well. Maybe it'll be nice to see a simpler magazine system, but then actually you end up with an indexing magazine, an indexing system built into the gun itself, and that usually doesn't work very well on cheaper guns. I really actually quite like it, which for cheap air guns is quite rare for me. I've got quite refined taste in them. There you go. And you know, I don't usually give out rating systems on these guns. But if we take my Virac as a 9 out of 10, having been tuned in on all the things I quite like to do to it, I'd give this a solid 6.9. I'm not sure what this rating system is made of and what it comprises, but that's just how I feel. So guys, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Don't be scared to go and buy an XM1. If you just want an air gun for going and having fun and are not too worried about the tech specs or the name or any of the other fancy stuff, this gun will kill rats and rabbits and crows and rooks and anything, as long as you're in accordance with the general license to your heart's content. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye. And well, stay safe and well.